I want to start off today by just talking very briefly about the concept of guilty pleasures. Now, before I saw this film, I did kind of understand the concept of guilty pleasure. It's a film that you absolutely love, you know, you love watching every minute of it, you know, it's, it's just a film that you enjoy. But at the same time, you kind of know it's, it's not going to win any awards, it's never going to be listed among the greatest films of all time, you know, it, it's just, I don't know, I, I think Cool Runnings is kind of the film uh, where I feel most... I don't know if I'd really call Cool Runnings a bad film that I enjoy, it's just simply a kind of film that isn't particularly ambitious that I enjoy. I don't really think there's anything obviously wrong with it. It just doesn't really try to do anything particularly uh, memorable or ambitious. It's just kind of silly. I think after watching this film, I think I now better sort of properly understand uh, the concept of guilty pleasures. Uh, because she's out of my league. It's not a good film. I'm sorry. It's just every single time I watch it, I think to myself, you oh, know, this just isn't particularly well structured. This isn't particularly well written. I'll go into that in, in, in a minute as to why. I can't help but enjoy it because of just one sort of core aspect and that's sort of the basic premise it's it's a really sort of fascinating idea to me uh but first of all i just want to go sort of more sort of uh objectively over maybe why this isn't a good film the the premise obviously is uh really kind of interesting i've heard a lot of people criticize the fact that this would never happen in real life and no it wouldn't a very attractive woman asks out a fairly sort of average looking guy uh, no, that probably wouldn't happen in real life, but that's why films exist, to ask questions and explore ideas that uh, probably you wouldn't see in reality, you know. Nobody questions fantasies or science fiction because they wouldn't happen in real life, so why should uh, a romantic comedy be any different, really? No, this wouldn't happen in real life, but that's why this film exists, basically. It's sort of asking the question, well, just suppose for a moment that it did happen. I, I also do sort of like the idea that uh, the the non-attractive person in this film is not hideously ugly or, you know, overweight or anything. He's just sort of average looking. He's more sort of normal. So I, I'm glad they didn't sort of try to take the two opposite extremes. They just sort of went for a more sort of normal guy compared to someone very attractive. Kirk, in, in many ways, both in terms of uh, his physique uh, and uh, just the way he looks and the way he acts, and in some ways, actually, uh, his life as well, actually, he's very much like me. And I think that is the reason, main reason why I enjoy this film. He's He lacks a bit of self confidence he's maybe not particularly uh, sort of well spoken he doesn't talk to you know anybody except perhaps his friends who he feels comfortable around um, and he he doesn't really sort of feel like he can or needs to accomplish anything out of life he's just sort of living his life and is just sort of trying to go along or cope with whatever is thrown his way for the most part though i think kirk is pretty well established in the earlier stages because we see his three friends who get along with him perfectly fine which makes sense that's why they're his friends really you know you will get along with your friends in very different ways that you will get along with your family because the reason you're friends is because you just naturally get along with them so that absolutely makes sense you know th those are the characters that Kirk relates to those are in a sense sort of the extension of Kirk his sort of sidekicks throughout this uh, film the people who help him out as much as they possibly can whereas his family are just simply people who he happens to be related to and they are genuinely awful. It's, it's sort of exaggerated in many ways, actually, kind of how awful a family they are. It's just sort of... I actually sort of wonder if maybe they went a bit too far with how awful a family Kirk has, because it's just right off the bat. It's just like they're so sort of not the kind of family you would ever want to have. You know, they're obnoxious. They don't really care for Kirk in any particularly interesting kind of way. Uh, they're not dicks towards him but uh, they're certainly not particularly nice to him and they don't really have any kind of value for who he is or what he does so uh, there is definitely um, a very good uh, job of establishing first of all Kirk's friend side of his life you know that's sort of relatively comfortable he's done it he's doing okay kind of there he's got three friends he gets along very well with at work and he has a dysfunctional and kind of awful family that he wants nothing to do with early on you you absolutely relate to Kirk and you you understand exactly where he's coming from and the difficulty of his situation then we meet uh, the uh, the female lead in this film Molly uh, who obviously her, her only real character trait I think is just simply the fact that she's very attractive a lot like like Kirk in many respects just sort of more a kind of typical nice person in many ways she's been more successful in life i suppose that just sort of ties in with the fact that she's an attractive woman you know she's not just attractive visually speaking but she's also attractive in terms of her lifestyle as well she's just simply a, a typical kind of nice person in the same way that kirk is uh, however what makes this fall apart for me is the fact that uh, there is really no real establishing of what molly's life has been like up until this point we really don't find out very much about her other than the fact that she's attractive. Uh, she has a friend that she's in business with. Uh, her business is 
event organizing you know again those things are very sort of quickly touched on and then we move on very quickly i was a little kind of confused when i first saw this film i assumed that it was uh, going to be very much like a lot of romantic comedies are it was going to be the story of the two characters who fall in love in this film it actually isn't i think actually it's very much just kirk's story and molly is just sort of happens to be the love factor in this and i'm not entirely sure if that works really i think they kind of needed to develop molly equally alongside kirk you know just to properly establish you know a proper motivation for her asking kirk out and her wanting to be with him there isn't much setting up of molly's character in this uh we meet her family only very briefly for a couple of times in this film not really told very much about her previous experiences with other boyfriends we meet an ex-boyfriend of his but Again, we're not really told very much about him and uh, why things went wrong. Uh, and it's weird, actually, that I'm talking about Molly being underdeveloped, uh, really, because I think another problem with this film is really the fact that there are too many characters in this film. You've got Kirk, you've got Molly, you've got Kirk's three friends, you've got Molly's friend, you've got Kirk's family, he's got a brother, his girl, his ex-girlfriend, her boyfriend, and his parents. You've got Molly's family, her sister, her parents... You've got uh, an ex-girlfriend of one of Kirk's friends. You've got another one of Kirk's friend's wives. And I think really with the exception of Kirk and his three friends and maybe his ex-girlfriend, really none of them are developed enough really for me to really be able to sort of properly understand any of these characters very much. So there are really too many characters to juggle, I think, in this film. The only real purpose I think they serve is just to give us comedy for the sake of comedy. Because obviously with this being a rom-com, uh, you just need the occasional sort of comedic scene in here now and again. Uh, a couple of sort of obvious ones, uh, the scenes where Kirk ejaculates inside his pants and uh, where Kirk has his balls shaved. Um, again, really just sort of in there, really just for the sake of comedy, really. They don't add very much to the story at all. I'm not entirely sure at what point Molly decides that she's interested in Kirk because basically what happens is um, they meet by accident. Kirk just happens to have come across her phone uh, at the airport where he works. Uh, he returns it to her. She sort of politely invites him just to stay for a drink. Uh, then in the unfortunate way that they get thrown out, Molly for some reason decides that that means she needs to make it up to Kirk by inviting him out to a hockey game. Now that could very sort of subtly be just simply Molly asking Kirk out, but disguising it in some kind of way and just making an excuse. So are we perhaps supposed to believe that, you know, just from a brief exchange uh, in airport security and then a brief exchange on the phone and then Kirk just returning her phone that's enough to make Molly think that this guy's worth worth asking out again no real development of Molly to make me sort of think is she maybe just sort of looking for a guy at this point you know this guy who uh, I, I assume she's found out uh, beforehand is single uh, seems like a relatively decent guy she just decides you know I'll give him a go again no real development of Molly or not enough of a development of Molly by that stage but the thing is her friend Paddy mentions to Kirk at the hockey game that Molly is into him which makes sense really it makes sense that uh, Molly would have shared that kind of information with a best friend I assume she wasn't expecting her to then share that with Kirk but uh, you know that's uh, you don't want your friends to share information with uh, other people particularly that kind of thing at the same time maybe your friends think uh, it's actually better if they do share it you know just to try and help move things along a little bit so maybe Paddy, in a sense, actually thought she was doing Molly a favour there. We don't really see enough interactions between Molly and Kirk prior to that point, and we don't find out enough about Molly prior to that point for me to really understand exactly why Molly would ask Kirk out. And I suppose maybe part of the idea of this film is the kind of mystery surrounding um, exactly why Molly would want to ask Kurt out. Maybe if we'd gotten to know Molly a bit more, prior to her meeting Kirk, maybe I'd have been able to accept that, but uh, with so little development of her, it's, it's kind of difficult for me to accept. Uh, and again, with it being a romantic comedy, uh, there's also a lot of just stuff that exists in there just for the sake of comedy, and a lot of stuff in there that doesn't really lead to anything, you know, plot points that don't really go anywhere. Uh, Molly appears to be uh, sort of kind of fanatical about hockey, just established in one scene and then quite quickly forgotten about, never mentioned again. Kirk has his ball shaved mentioned briefly in one scene later on and there's nothing else to it other than you know the ball shaving scene i guess being kind of funny uh kirk ejaculates inside his pants there's a little bit of a, a fallout between him and molly after that because uh, kirk has to leave quite abruptly after that happens 
but in film time they make up within about 10 minutes I think so again doesn't really lead to anything particularly major uh, we do find out uh, a bit more about Molly uh, after Kirk has met her and uh, they've gone on their first date and um, uh, we find out uh, that uh, you know she has a bit of a trouble with communicating with her dad never really get that impression when we actually meet her dad though his dad her dad just seems like a perfectly sort of decent guy uh, again doesn't really lead to anything doesn't really sort of come into any kind of real significance in fact now that I think about it we don't see any interactions between Molly and her parents when Kirk isn't there so it's kind of difficult for me to understand exactly what kind of relationship Molly has with her family but it's easy to understand the kind of relationship that Kirk has with his family again Kirk is a lot more developed than Molly in this film and that sort of uh, imbalance of the two main characters that becomes a bit of a problem to me then towards the end of the film I think is when things really start to go downhill and really sort of fall apart uh, first of all obviously in sort of typical romantic comedy uh, fashion it looks as if their relationship is absolutely peaking and getting to the absolute pinnacle of and then obviously the house of cards completely fall apart the actual trigger for making this house of cards sort of completely fall down is actually set up before the, the real sort of um, moment where it collapses actually happens. Uh, Molly, for some reason, lies to her parents in front of Kirk about Kirk, and uh, nothing is said of it at the time. Uh, Kirk doesn't appear to think anything of it. There's literally sort of no mention of it, even sort of when Kirk's moved away from Molly and uh, gone to talk some to someone else. It, it's like it never happened. Uh, in film time, it's actually a good ten minutes before it's brought up again. And in between that, Sir Kirk finds out about some... Uh, fault in in molly defect i think they call it in the film uh from her ex-boyfriend we finally get to sort of what you obviously expect to be the absolute pinnacle of their relationship they're gonna uh, sleep together for the first time and it's at this point uh, kirk finds out about her defect that she has webbed toes and uh, it's just something about this scene that doesn't quite add up to me uh kirk decides that this isn't big enough a defect in her for her to be acceptable as a girlfriend to him she's too good for him and that makes him think he has to break up with her i'm not quite sure how that kind of logic works molly's too good for me so i'm gonna have to break up with you he's, he's made it pretty obvious uh from this point already uh throughout the film that he is kind of puzzled as to why molly uh would want to ask him out why is it suddenly now such a much bigger issue is it just because we're about 10 minutes from the end of the film there's a little bit of a sort of feud and argument between the two of them just before kirk decides to leave uh, and it seems kind of almost forced to me. I'm not entirely sure. I don't quite understand what exactly it is that they're arguing about. It seems like they're just arguing about each other's suspicions of one another that have been apparent uh, even before this. Uh, Molly is too good for Kirk. And Molly has asked Kirk out because he's just sort of a, a typical kind of nice guy. And she won't get any, any kind of sort of emotionally uh, hurt factor out of him. It seems to me more like uh, Molly is the one in the wrong here and Kirk is just sort of annoyed that uh, she's asked him out uh, but Molly is the one who does most of the yelling in this scene so I don't quite know what it is that Molly's supposed to be annoyed about because Kirk is the one who decides to break up with her it just doesn't quite add up to me this scene it doesn't feel very natural it doesn't seem to make complete sense uh, and then of course in the middle of all that is just a sort of very brief mention of the fact that uh, Molly uh, has quite obviously lied about Kirk in front of him to her parents but again, it, it, it's mentioned, but it's sort of very sort of glossed over so very sort of briefly. And it doesn't seem to become any kind of more of an issue than anything else that's said in that scene. Uh, I don't know if maybe they added that in there to avoid any kind of accusations people might have had about the character of Molly that maybe she's a Mary Sue. Maybe they wanted to just sort of point out, oh, you know, there actually is a little bit of a fault in Molly's personality. With such a lack of development of Molly in the early stages, it's... Uh, it doesn't really mean anything, really. You know, we're not really told anything about Molly's relationship with her parents, so it doesn't really mean very much. And the fact that it isn't mentioned at all by any of the characters for a good ten minutes in the film, and in actual time, it, it had to have been a good two or three hours at least uh, before it was mentioned again. So it just comes across as kind of weird, that. Uh, and then the other problem, of course, is uh, this is just sort of a major sort of romantic comedy kind of cliche, that they break up shortly before the end of the film, for no more reason than just it's shortly before the end of the film so we have to break up you know it, it's it's very kind of forced and it's a bit cliched and then the film gets incredibly cliched right at the end the mad dash at an airport no less it couldn't really be much more cliched the ending it's just 
a typical kind of ridiculous comedy slapstick uh, mad dash. And again, it only really happens just really for the sake of having a mad dash, you know. Uh, Kirk's friend Stainer just decides, you know, he's going to try and straighten things out between the two of them. Molly just sort of is along for the ride in this. It, this is all Stainer's idea. Kirk sort of has an abrupt change of heart uh, uh, while he's on a plane. Uh, I do like, actually, the establishing of Marley uh, throughout the film that, uh, you know, she's. we gradually sort of get to realise that uh, she's jealous of Molly. And uh, she's she's also a little bit desperate just to sort of be with someone for the sake of being with someone. She likes to think that she's irresistible when she isn't. That, that She was actually uh, much better developed than Molly, really. She, the arc that she goes over and uh, the sort of the dislike we as the audience have for her attitude towards just wanting to be with Kirk for the sake of being with anyone, you know, it, it is very much sort of a, a very sort of slimy kind of dislikable kind of attitude as a sort of something of an antagonist to the film. She works really well, I thought. You know, the character of Marley actually does work a lot better, than I think, than the character of Molly, who... Uh, there's no real trait to her personality other than the fact that she's just a sort of typical nice person, like, you know, the scene where, with Kirk's family, Kirk's family are awful, Molly's just sort of unfazed by it. There's really nothing more to it than that. You know, it might have been a bit more interesting if there'd been more of a reaction from Molly in a more sort of positive manner than that. Maybe she'd found sort of more positive aspects to the awfulness of Kirk's family, but it's it's not really. It's just that she's unfazed by Kirk's family. So anyway, the uh, mad dash at the end, but then when they actually come to meet uh, at the end of it, you know, after a lot of sort of unnecessary shenanigans with them meeting at the airport, it seems like Molly seems to be the one who actually has something to say about uh, the reasons why they broke up and uh, the fact that she wants to get back with him. And Kirk is just like, oh, so you actually want to get back together? Okay. There's really nothing more to it than that. It's nothing they actually say in their exchange when they decide to get back together that we didn't know already. You know, again, Molly's lying to her parents is mentioned, but nothing is said of it. Nothing comes of it. So again, I don't quite understand uh, what the point of it was. It was... With the whole breakup and getting back together at the end, it was just more a sort of case of Kirk thinks Molly's too good for him, but then he decides, actually, no, she isn't. Actually, I am good enough for her. It's really just sort of a question of self-confidence, which is a good message, to be fair. That In that sense, the ending does have quite a good quality. You know, it's about, you know, the, the, racing, the rating system that is uh, quite a prominent part of this film is, you know, complete BS, really. It's, uh, it's not important at all. It's just... Uh, it's not important, uh, you know, what anybody says that you are, you know, or writing down any kind of rating for yourself. It's just simply about the individual and what they think of you uh, and what's important to them. Molly thought Kirk was good enough for her, so why shouldn't Kirk think he's good enough for Molly as well? Good message, you know. But every the other aspect of this film, you know, I, I, I completely relate to the main character. And I kind of think this film could have been really good, maybe if Molly had just been a bit better developed, but... As it is, it's an enjoyable enough film, uh, because I, I do relate to the main character a lot, and I do understand what he's going through and the dilemma that he has. And it is an interesting kind of premise. You know, it is kind of interesting what would happen if a very attractive person were to act it, were to ask out somebody who is obviously not so attractive. Just uh, the underdevelopment of Molly. There's too many characters. The breakup and uh, the get back together at the very end, as as well as being rather sloppily written, is also extremely cliched. A lot of plot points that don't really go anywhere, and there's a lot of comedy in here just for the sake of being comedy, really. They don't, it doesn't really add anything to the story. But it's an enjoyable film, at least, and I think this definitely does sum up the term guilty pleasure quite well. And just one last thing I want to say about this film. Uh, the song that is used during the end credits, uh, Undiscovered, by James Morrison, Go check that out on iTunes, or just listen to it in the end credits to this film if you haven't seen it already. Uh, that is an awesome song. I had never heard it before I saw this film. Uh, as soon as I heard it during the end credits, uh, I absolutely knew I had to go and download that on iTunes, because that is an awesome song. Okay, that's that, guys. I will see you again soon for another film review.